All right, everyone, so this is going to be our Unit 3 video, um, and we're only going to talk about skill number one, which is properties of acids and bases in this video, so it'll be a little bit of a short one. So when we think about how an acid compared to a base tastes, obviously we don't recommend um, actually tasting chemicals in the lab, but there are some acids and bases that are found in um, cooking and things like that in our natural foods and so acids taste sour um, so imagine like a lemon for example um, whereas bases taste bitter um, something I don't recommend getting into your mouth is soap but that kind of taste um, the bitter taste that um, you have if you've ever gotten soap in your mouth um, that is what other bases taste like now texture or how it feels, an acid is going to feel, I mean, like water. It's just going to feel normal. But a base is going to feel slippery. Okay. Now when an acid is added to water, okay, it will produce H plus ions, whereas a base is going to produce OH minus ions. So most students, a common mistake I saw was they would put H minus, but it's OH minus. So make sure that you pay close attention to that. Now, conductivity is something that acids and bases have in common. They're both good conductors of electricity. Okay, so they're both good conductors. This is something they have in common, whereas the other things are pretty different. Now, when we look at the pH range, pH stands for potential hydrogen or potential H plus and so since acids produce a lot of H plus they have a low pH so 0 um, to 7 whereas bases are going to be higher than 7 so you're going to see like 0 to 14 now if you actually have a pH of exactly 7 we call that neutral um, so typically um, pure water would be an example of something neutral. Now, there are two types of litmus paper. There's red litmus paper and there is blue litmus paper. Now, the thing you want to know is that anytime you dip any type of litmus paper into an acid, it's going to turn red. So when red litmus pe paper is dipped in it, it just kind of stays red because it was red to begin with. But blue litmus paper will change to red or turn red. Now bases, the way I remember this is bases start with, starts with the letter B and so does the um, color blue. So when red litmus paper is dipped into a base it turns blue but when blue litmus paper is dipped into a base it stays blue because it can't, you know, change its color from something that it starts out as. Now, phenolphthalein is another indicator, and the way you pronounce it is phenolphthalein. Okay, that's kind of how you pronounce it, phenolphthalein. And when phenolphthalein, it's a liquid, when you add it to an acid, it will stay clear. But when you add it to a base, it will turn bright pink. Now, these um, three things, so the litmus paper, the phenolphthalein, these are indicators, okay? They help indicate the pH of whatever it is you're looking at. So, for example, um, one way that you see this in nature is there are certain flowers. Um, I have them in my yard. This is a horrible picture <laughs> of them, but they're called hydrangeas. So if you are familiar with hydrangeas, they come in all different colors, but um, here, I'll draw a fake picture of hydrangeas because this is not what they look like. But when um, hydrangeas are in soil, that is acidic then the flower part is pink so if the soil has a pH 
um, less than 7, then it's pink. But if the soil has a pH that's higher than 7, then it turns kind of a purpley blue color. Um, so it'll be purple mixed with a little bit of kind of a, a dark blue in there. And so your flower can literally change colors from year to year if you change what is in your dirt or in your soil. And so it's a natural indicator. And so that is your video on the properties of acids and bases. It's the real basics.